Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're doing well this afternoon. I just want to begin by uh, saying thank you for joining us once again tonight. And also, I just want to uh, assure you that we are praying for each and every one of you. And let me once again encourage you that if you have some sort of need, uh, particularly getting out to the store, uh, maybe you need some errands run or something of that nature, if we can help you, please let the church office know. We would be uh, glad to uh, assist you as we can. And again, we are praying for you. Also, something that's new, if you are uh, just finding us on Facebook, perhaps, if you could help us out by using the link that is located in the comment section, there is a, a digital welcome card there, and we would love to have you sign up with us so we can have a record of your uh, attending our session tonight. And maybe you're watching us through uh, the Grace uh, YouTube channel. You can also find the same link at uh, down by the uh, des description area. And so you can help us out by filling out that very same digital welcome card. That would be a help to us. And then also we would have um, opportunity if you need us to contact you, we would um, be glad to do that. I also wanted to let you know that later on this week, we will be posting a Spotify playlist um, for all of you. We are trying to incorporate into our Sunday services some music. And um, we also want to make sure that you're getting familiar with maybe some of the songs that you don't know at this point. And so that is going to be coming out, uh, Lord willing, later this week so you can have access to that. Well, we are here on uh, Wednesday and uh, things in our country continue to um, kind of change a little bit as, as the days go by. And uh, if you're following the news, uh, you know that uh, the stimulus plan was uh, signed uh, by the Senate uh, very, very early this morning, and we certainly are praying that that will be um, a help to many of you that maybe are going through a difficult time right now. Uh, we also know that our president had some pretty strong hopes that he communicated yesterday about uh, seeing at least part of the country being reopened by Easter, and uh, we are praying about that. And uh, as, as Christians, as believers in Christ, as, as President Trump even alluded to this, is that Easter is a, is a very important day for us. And so we are certainly praying that um, by Easter Sunday, we might be able to be back together. We don't know that for sure yet. We will be keeping you posted on our availability of having everyone back on campus. Um, as of now, uh, we are still being asked to meet through this venue. And I hope this is, I truly hope, and I truly pray this is a hope to you. So while we are maybe seeing some, some, um, some signs of improvement in some areas, people in New York obviously today are going through some very difficult times. Uh, we need to keep uh, the city of New York and Governor Cuomo there in New York in our prayers as well. And uh, so I'd ask you to continue to pray. So as these days uh, continue and uh, we are pressing on in the COVID-19 issue, um, we would all, I think, be uh, eager and, and, and ready to admit that there is still a lot of uncertainty. And I want to talk once again about the dynamic of, of uncertainty and how the uncertainty that we are facing can often produce a lot of anxiousness and a lot of anxiety in our, in our hearts. And here's maybe a silver lining in that. Before I'm going to just share one verse with you tonight, by the way. Before we get to that verse, without a conscious recognition that life is at times hard and confusing, and without times of us acknowledging that um, our ability to help ourselves is insufficient, outside of those times, we often are destined to become self-reliant. And probably each and every one of us are realizing that there is so much in our, in our world, in our daily living, that is absolutely outside of our control. Many people have commented about this. Many people that I have come into contact with have said, you know, we've only been doing this for a week or so, and it feels like it's been so much longer. And we probably all share that sentiment. And so I maybe your the level of anxiousness in your heart is is building a little bit as we go through these days of uncertainty. As I've been reading um, and studying actually for this coming Sunday, I came across a verse of scripture that I want to share with you tonight, just for a few minutes. Um, one simple proverb. It's actually found in Proverbs chapter twelve, and uh, it's actually just verse twenty-five. 
For sake of time, I'm not going to go into any discussion on the greater detail of that proverb as far as where it falls in the context. I'll leave that to you to read some of those surrounding verses because they also are excellent verses um, for us. And you may or may not have a Bible in front of you, but I'm going to read the verse one phrase at a time. And so often what happens in Proverbs is you have a statement in the beginning and then the proverb will twist it or or apply it, if you will, or, or create a contrast in the second part of the proverb. And this one really does that. It kind of makes a statement and then it gives us an instruction in the second half that is a contrast to the first. So again, if you have a Bible, you're permitted to read the whole verse, but maybe you don't have a Bible in front of you. So I'm going to present it to you in these two halves. Listen to the first part of Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25, the proverb says, anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down. I don't have an extensive experience in fishing, but I remember when I was young, I remember my brother was the one who kind of taught me how to fish. He was big into bass fishing and he had a boat and he would take me out and he told me about the the parts of putting a fishing line together and I understood you had to have a hook and I understood the concept of a bobber and the first couple of times as he's walking me through me he put this weight on the end of my line that would help the the hook sink down into the water otherwise it would just float on the surface well when I read this verse I was thinking about the idea of a sinker that sometimes if that sinker is, is very heavy, it that, that hook will just drop right to the bottom. And this proverb says that anxiety, or you could say it this way, anxiousness is heaviness to the heart and it weighs us down. Now think about anxiety for just a moment. And we're, you're probably like me hearing a lot of people talking about anxiety and talking about anxiousness and fear and all of those things. But this word anxiety, I want you to understand kind of the Hebrew word behind it. It means an emotional response to one's, to a threat to one's well-being. Let me read that again. The word refers to an emotional response to a threat that comes against one's well-being. Often this level of anxiety raises to the surface when we are facing times of uncertainty. And we've said this before, and I've said this in recent um, presentations, even through Facebook, is that when we have this uncertainty, we have then anxiousness. It can lead us very, very quickly to depression, and then it can even lead us to a place of despair. So think about that process. Uncertainty produces stress. And we are certainly a stressed nation right now. You're probably at home feeling some level of stress in your life. Stress produces anxiety. And as we get anxious and we begin to think about the what ifs and we think about all the possibilities of things that might happen, and the vast majority of them will never happen, but we think about that, we become anxious, and then anxiety produces depression, and depression can lead us to despair. So this word anxiety talks about an extreme emotional distress that is caused by a difficult time that could result in personal loss. Wow, that's where our country is right now. When we think about the circumstances that we find ourselves, COVID-19, a virus that we started hearing about a few months ago, has greatly changed the landscape of our country. And there's a lot of uncertainty. We are feeling the threat of losing something valuable to us. Think about what is at risk right now. Some, Some people in and around our ministry have lost their jobs. And I've talked to business owners that are on the other side of that, and they're actually letting some of their employees go. And that's a very hard thing on them. So there are people at risk of of losing their job. Maybe, Maybe you're in that situation as you're watching this. Maybe you've 
lost your job or maybe there's a threat of losing losing your job and you're anxious about that. There's also a reason in our in our minds to be anxious in a sense for the fact that um, we could lose a loved one. My dad is 83 years old. He's living in the Northeast. He's living in an area that um, is closer to some of the hot spots of this virus. And my dad is being careful and staying home and all the things that um, he's being asked to do. I should add, as far as I know, and what he tells me is he's staying home, and I pray that he is, is that there is a lot, there is a fear of lo losing a loved one, of someone that we know. And then for a lot of us, which is also tied to our jobs, is the fear of losing money. There's this uncertainty about that. I've heard many people say this too, and and that is they're not even looking at their 401k, and they don't want to think about what their stocks have done over the last few days. But think about it for a moment. This I'm building this word anxiety up for a moment and seeing that this word is an, I'm talking about an emotional response. There is a legitimate threat. It could cost me something. It could be a personal loss to, to me that it produces anxiousness. We have this fear. We have this anxiety. It's created and it feeds on uncertainty. And what is the effect of that? Well, the proverb says that anxiety in a man's heart, this is, by the way, is the core of our being. When it reaches into our heart, it reaches into our soul, the proverb says it weighs us down. And maybe that's how you're feeling today. Maybe you feel weighed down by the circumstances that we find ourselves in. Heaviness in our mind can weigh on us emotionally, it can weigh on us spiritually. Not only at times do we experience maybe depression or some anxiety in times like this, we also begin to question God and we begin to question his goodness or we begin to question his presence. And that weighs on us. And our minds and our thinking, our anxiety reaches our soul and it can cause destabilization in our, in our minds and in our thinking and in our soul, in, our, in the core of our being. Weighs us down is this picture of an intolerable, crushing burden. It's a trial. I was thinking this morning when I was um, very young, I was about 12, 13 years old, somewhere in there, my family was helping uh, somebody move. I had never really experienced that before, and I went with my dad. To, we had moved a couple of times when I was little, but I was too little to help. And I remember being in the back of the moving truck, and I had a box in my hands. And again, I was 11, 12 years old. I had this box in my hand, and I was in the back of a U-Haul moving truck, so I was a few feet in the air. And I had the box, and I jumped out of the back of the truck, expecting that I would land on my feet like I would any other time, but I didn't account for the weight in my hands. And you guess what happened? I was on the pavement and I had bloody elbows and a bloody knee because I didn't account for this weight that was additional to me. So this stress, this strain, this burden can feel like it's crushing my soul. Let me read for you Psalm 44 where the psalmist says, for our soul is bowed down to the dust, our belly clings to the ground. Rise up, come to our help, redeem us for the sake of your steadfast love, the psalmist said. So sometimes the circumstances weigh us down, but very often we're weighed down by our thinking. What are you telling yourself right now? What are you listening to right now? I have felt like for me, as the pastor of our, our, of our church and, and leader of our ministry, that part of my responsibility has been to stay as current as I can on this situation. And I will tell you, I, I have watched more news in the last few days than I would normally, probably in a year almost. And as you listen to it and you see the headlines and you get this information, this constant barrage of breaking news, it can weigh on us and our thinking begins to become distressed and strained and worn down. Think about the physical results of that. Anxiety can produce insomnia, high blood pressure, and ulcers, and other problematic things. 
other problematic responses. So this first part of the psalm really doesn't tell us anything earth-shattering. We, we know that. Difficulty, difficult times, anxiety weighs us down. It's like we're carrying a burden on our shoulders and we're being crushed by this time of stress. What I found surprising is how the proverb con contrasts that. That we have this anxiety in the heart weighs down a man. Listen to the second part of this verse. The, the proverb says, but a good word makes him glad. That's an interesting move in the second part of this proverb. A good word makes him glad. Good is the antidote for anxiety and anxiousness. This good word is spoken at a right time to a person that is experiencing the weight of a heavy soul, and it's an effective offset that treats the cause of this crippling anxiety. Think about it this way. It's the antidote. We're looking for um, a way to defeat this virus. They're looking for a vaccine to defeat COVID-19. The vaccine, the proverb says, for a weary, weighed down soul is a good word. Proverbs 15.23 says, A man takes joy in giving an answer and a timely word how good it is. So while anxiety can weigh people down and lead people to the place that they feel as if they are drowning in despair, a kind, personal, positive, pleasant, and timely word can restore the soul and lift the burden from another people. Now, of other people. What is interesting to me is the proverb really doesn't give us specifics on what that looks like. And I think that's on purpose. Remember, these, these proverbs are kind of general principles. It doesn't, it, its intention isn't to give us a list of specific things that we do. I just wrote down three. And that sometimes a good word is a personal word of encouragement or a personal word of thanks spoken to a person. Sometimes it's a word of appreciation. Sometimes it's just saying thank you to that person. Or in our culture right now, a good word is just a bit of good news. We get so caught up in the negativity that sometimes we just need to hear um, the lighter side of life. I've had a couple people suggest that I start um, these, uh, these uh, sessions off with a joke just to kind of make us laugh for a minute and just kind of think about uh, the lighter side of life. So... How does this apply to us? Well, as believers, and maybe you're here, you're, you're watching today, and you feel anxious, and you're feeling that, but as believers, and we'll talk about how to resolve that in a moment, but as believers, we ought to be mindful of the emotional state of those around us and recognize that a simple word of kindness can encourage and refocus the attention of one whose soul is being weighed down. A good word offered at the right time brings cheer to a weary soul. Look for those opportunities. By the way, I often think about this statement. Whenever we communicate, always remember you're not responsible, or excuse me, you are responsible for what you communicate, not for what you intended. So be careful what we communicate. Be purposeful in your communication with others. Now, as I was thinking about this um, just about an hour or so ago, getting ready for the session, I was thinking that we have to be careful with this verse and that the intention of this verse is not to overly simplify the complexities of life's challenges or negate our desperate need for God's grace. He's not saying that there's a simple answer to life's problems. He's certainly not saying that God isn't even found in the solution to our problems. He is, that's not the point of the proverb at all. We know that life is hard. Life is complex. Life is uncertain. Life does bring bends and bumps to our road from time to time. The point isn't to question God and our need for God and our need for God's grace. And it's not to oversimplify life's problems. What this proverb is doing is highlighting the power of human speech. It's highlighting the power that for us as believers, are we mindful 
to speak to the soul of another person in a way that lifts them up. I, I don't know what your conversations at home are about, but it's easy to let them become focused on the negative, to become focused on the problems. They're real, but we shouldn't lose hope and joy in the midst of a trial. And we certainly, as believers, should not forget that God has told us in 1 Thessalonians 5.14 that we are to admonish the idle and encourage the faint-hearted. We are to offer those words of encouragement. So as I leave you today, I just want to remind you that um, rather than simply mining the Proverbs for kind of some tweetable, pithy statements, we have to put these Proverbs into practice in our daily living. Biblical wisdom is clear, it's inspired instruction given to us by God that reveals to us the true nature of God, and it also gives us clear instruction for human interaction. Friend, panic, fear, and despair is not going to help you or anyone else. You may be feeling anxious right now, you may be uncertain, but God is still sovereign, God is still good, God is still in control, and your panic and your fear and your despair and your what ifs that you're filling your mind with, they're not going to control, they're, excuse me, they're not going to fix this problem. But unfortunately, there are those that feel that way. They are struggling with this. Proverbs 25, 11 says, A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in a setting of silver. It may seem odd to you that I chose one simple verse today about speech. Well, I chose it because I think we get careless in our speech when times are hard. When we face trials, I fear that we get a little self-focused we're not looking for people around us that maybe are anxious, people that are struggling, and we can get a little reckless with our tongues. Let me just encourage you that as we are going through this time to speak truth, to rest in the Lord, look for those that are faint-hearted, and offer a word of encouragement. So I leave you with, with two applications today. Number one, regardless of where you are emotionally, Right now, cast all of your cares primarily upon the Lord because he cares for you. Don't lose sight of God. Again, this proverb isn't saying you don't need God's help, you don't need God's support, you don't need God's grace. That isn't the point of the proverb at all. You need God more than you need anyone. But remember, regardless of how you feel today, it doesn't change who God is. Rest in him, cast all of your care, anxiety, upon the Lord. He cares for you. He loves you. And by the way, if you don't know Christ as your Savior, I would encourage you to um, get some help with that question. What does that mean? What does Jesus, um, a relationship with Jesus look like? I'm going to encourage you, if you have that place to register with us online, if you have a question about salvation, go in there, contact us, contact us through our, 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 our website, gracenc.org, and reach out to us and we can tell you what it means to know Christ as your Savior. So my first application for you is cast all of your cares upon the Lord. My second application in closing is this. As you rest in the Lord, as you find comfort in Christ, as you find encouragement in Christ, use that comfort and encouragement to encourage others. Be on the lookout right now for people who need a word, a good word, spoken into an anxious soul to relieve the weight that is on their shoulders today. Pray for those opportunities, look for them, and don't let this proverb be a nice little sentiment. Put it into practice and speak good words to those who are overcome with anxiety and anxiousness. Thank you for being with us uh, today. We are, again, praying for you. And uh, let me encourage you once again to share this video. If you find that this content was helpful to you, it may be helpful to others. And so please go out and share that. And uh, we would encourage you to do that. And one last word of encouragement, if you do need something from our church, 
If we are able to help you, please contact us. We will do what we can. We're praying for you and uh, trusting in the Lord today. God bless you. Thank you.